it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for another PB&J card class. And today's video is the third in a series of four featuring elegant one-layer holiday cards using Penny Black's stamps from their newest collection, Mary and Joy. And I love creating these type of cards. They're so fun to color and paint in. And they also are very easy to pop in the mail because they are one layer. So here's a look at the card that we will be creating today. And just a note before we get started, I will have all of the supplies listed up on screen at the very end of the video. So if you want to check out anything in more detail at that time, the stamp names, the numbers, the inks, the paints, the markers, the paint brushes, all of that will be listed in that supply list. Now today's card features features this gorgeous cling stamp called Poinsettia, Poinsettia Poem. And I went ahead and stamped this off camera um, once along the top of my card and once along the bottom and added my sentiment in the middle. I am stamping onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. And I stamped this using Desert Sand Memento ink. And this ink is great because it is a lighter colored ink but not so light that I have to strain to try and see it when I'm coloring things in. But once everything is colored in, it does give it a bit of a no line look as if it was just painted um, instead of stamped in say a dark black or a dark brown outline and then colored in later. Now to cut, do all of my coloring, I am using Arteza Twi markers and I am coloring directly with the marker tip onto my paper and then I am blending that using a paintbrush and water. And you'll see here that I am adding my darkest color, a darker red, towards the sort of the base or the bottom of the petal. I'm adding then a touch of yellow and this helps this um, red from getting too pink looking and also just give some variation of color and then I go back and blend that with the water. Now I try to work on petals that are not touching each other um, and if I need to I just go ahead and dry that before I move on to a petal that is touching um, one that is right next to it. As I begin working on petals that are right next to each other I do try to be aware of keeping the edges that touch um, one of them being darker and one of them being lighter. So if it is a petal that is underneath the other one, I want that to be darker. And if it's a petal that is on top, I want that edge to be lighter. So on this petal I'm doing here, for instance, you can see it's kind of above both of the petals that it's next to. So its lightest colors are on the outer edges of the petal and the darkest towards the center and sort of the back. I'll be doing that again here. You can see that darkest color just going in on the areas that are underneath another petal, then going back with that yellow, that's my lighter color, and then going in and blending those with my water and making sure, on, like this one, to leave some very light edges along the sides. And that gives the illusion or the look that some petals are on top of others and some are beneath. Now you could do this technique with any of your favorite water soluble markers like Zig or Tombow dual brush pens. Um, you could also just do this with your favorite watercolors or your alcohol based markers. It's really what you prefer and what you are used to and have in your stash. I decided on um, some of these flowers to go in with these for these top petals or the ones that are um, not layered behind to go in with a very lighter color. Then color with my red onto an old acrylic block and just pick that up with just a little bit of water and that allows me to add just a light wash of that color so it ties into the darker petals below but those petals on top still remain pretty light. And then I'm actually adding just a touch of that yellow onto the edges of some of those petals too, just for some variation in color. And I find that by adding just a little bit of yellow here and there to um, floral images, it just gives them a very natural look. So again, I am going to dry that with my heat tool before moving on to 
those petals uh, that are left that are adjacent to the ones that I already colored. That keeps them from all blending together and sort of becoming just one big blob. I'll pick up a little bit off of that acrylic block mixed with water and just add a touch of that shading to these petals while they're still wet. And you can see there along that edge those two petals were kind of starting to morph into one so I just added a little bit darker color along the edge just to define uh, the petals from each other. I'm just continuing with that there. And then again just using my heat tool to dry that before moving on to the next step. So here I'm using uh, one of those same Arteza Twi markers but I'm using um, the fine tip edge. So each marker has a brush tip and then it has a very fine tip on the other side. The brush tip is fairly small and fairly firm which is great for all these details and then the fine tip is very very small which is really nice um, and handy for adding in details. For the leaves I'm going to work just a few at a time or a couple. I'm going to color my lightest green on there and then just completely wet down that entire leaf and then just picking up off of my uh, acrylic block I've colored with sort of a turquoise color and I'm just patting that onto the wet surface and this just gives this a very loose watercolor look and it's very easy to do with those um, petals while they're still wet just to drop in a little bit uh, darker colors here and there. Here you can see I'm just adding an even darker green there where it is overlapped by the poinsettia petal and also towards the base of this leaf. Next I'll move on to some of these berries just to give you a look at how I've colored those. For some I just colored directly with the marker for a darker shade and then just for a lighter um, sh uh, color but within that same sort of color family I'm picking it up off the acrylic block with a little bit of water and then painting that in. And then I can go in and just add a touch of that yellow here and there. Um, some of those started to all look like one giant berry so just by adding a little bit of that yellow it gives them each their own separate look. can also go in and darken up some of the edges just so that they um, look like individual berries. And I'm just blending some of that yellow there and dropping in a little bit more off of the palette. And then to finish this off I'm just using the fine tip of the marker to just trace over the branch lines. I followed the same coloring process on all the berries and all the leaves and the poinsettias. And I love this step because I feel like, oh, now it's all finally coming together. <laughs> and then finally, I'm using some memento ink in the color of peanut brittle just to add a little bit of a golden look to the tops and the corners. I felt like it just didn't look quite finished and I do like how this gives it a touch of a vintage look and I'm applying that ink using a jumbo sponge dauber tool starting off of the edge of the card and working my way on in a circular motion. So here's a look at the finished card. This is a standard A2 size card ready to go onto a note card four and a quarter by five and a half. I hope you enjoyed today's video and are inspired to give this technique a try. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website and blog. And I will link to all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. And if you stay tuned, that supply list, as promised, will be popping up right on screen for you. Thanks for watching.